Hello, this video is one of the modules on offer as part of the Foundation Online Training Course. Our unique course has helped over 10,000 people to study for their Foundation exam. And the course consists of online lessons, videos like this one, quizzes and mock tests. To access our free course and to get the latest version of this video and our collection of videos, go to www.hamtrain.co.uk. Now, on with the module. Hi, this is Kelly from Essex Ham and welcome to Foundation Online, getting you started with amateur radio. Here's what we'll be looking at in this module. Hello, my name's Pete and I'll be your guide for this module. Welcome to the world of amateur radio. This is the first of our course modules looking at the basics of amateur radio. In this module we cover the background to amateur radio, the radio spectrum, the frequencies that radio amateurs can use and the different modes of operation. This module serves as a general introduction to the subject of amateur radio. As you work your way through our course, you may be interested to know that we also offer classroom lessons, video breakdowns of some of the key topics, quizzes and mock tests, a course book available in paperback, Kindle and Apple Books, revision guides, exam hints and tips, and online support groups. Let's get started by discussing the basics of amateur radio. Amateur radio is for self-training and experimentation. It is for non-commercial use, that means you can't run a business over amateur radio and there's no advertising. Amateur radio is a recreational activity that promotes technical innovation, development of radio skills and international friendship. In the UK there are three licence levels. Foundation is the first, followed by intermediate and then full. Let's take a look at the history of amateur radio. The hobby dates back well over a hundred years. Radio amateurs were very heavily involved in reception of enemy messages in World War II. The hobby started using Morse code, which was followed by voice. Amateur radio has been used to save many lives over the years, and an organisation called Raynet was formed in 1953 following various floods in the south of England. And amateur radio played a very important part in the 1982 Falklands War. That was the past, what about today? Well, there are over two and a half million licensed amateurs around the world. The top countries are Japan, the US, Germany and the United Kingdom. Today's amateurs use voice, Morse code, data, images and video. We also make use of internet links to communicate where we can't get through using radio. Amateur radio activities include various contests, de-expeditions where you travel to distant parts of the world and Jota, Jamboree on the air where radio amateurs help the scouts. There's also emergency communications with a service known as Raynet and amateurs also have access to space with amateur satellites and we can also talk to astronauts on the International Space Station. About six people is the max that you would want up here uh, in the current state of the space station. Over. Today's radio amateur takes part in lots of different activities. Amateur radio is about making friends, experimenting with radio, getting out and about at field days, taking part in contests and competitions, Collecting QSL cards. Once you've had a conversation with an amateur, you can send a postcard confirming your contact. There are also rallies where you can get together to buy equipment and catch up with friends. Nets, which are on-air radio discussions. And of course, amateur radio training. Let's look at the radio spectrum now. On the screen, you'll see a summary of the spectrum, going from very low frequency to low frequency, medium frequency, high frequency, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, super high frequency and extremely high frequency. The radio spectrum is used by many users. Broadcast radio and TV stations, the mobile phone networks, the emergency services, the military, aviation, maritime, space exploration. 
Also, the spectrum is used by businesses, such as taxis. Satellites and GPS use the radio spectrum, as does Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Devices around the house, such as cordless phones and baby monitors. And there's also CCTV cameras, security systems, plus PMR. This stands for Private Mobile Radio, the type of walkie-talkies that you can pick up in electrical shops. On the screen now is a representation of three bands. The high frequency band, which goes from 3 MHz to 30 MHz. The VHF band, which goes from 30 to 300 MHz. And the UHF band, which goes from 300 to 3000 MHz. You note from these bands that some of them are coloured green. These are amateur radio allocations. You can see we're sharing the bands with numerous other radio users, so we have to be very careful about making sure that we don't cause interference. Radio frequency bands are very congested. You'll need to remember the following numbers for your exam. HF 3 to 30 MHz, VHF 30 to 300 MHz, and UHF 300 to 3000 MHz. Amateur radio operators are given an allocation. There are several bands that we can use. On the screen here you'll see the Foundation Licence Parameters table. This is published by Ofcom in the Amateur Radio Licence and it's also provided in an exam booklet that you can take into your Amateur Radio exam. Some frequencies are shared with other users and in the table you can see whether the frequencies are available for primary use or for secondary use. If it's secondary use, amateurs are sharing the band with other users. A core requirement for amateur radio operators is not to cause interference with other services. Let's look at the VHF band. VHF is generally used for local communications. The table on the screen now will be supplied in your exam, so you're not expected to remember it. You will need to understand it though. As you can see, we are sharing the band with many other users. Broadcasters, aeronautical, space, land mobile, radio astronomy and maritime mobile. Our allocation is 144 to 146, which you can see on the table is allocated to amateur and amateur satellite. And the frequency allocation table, pictured on the screen here, is available in the exam booklet, so you don't need to remember it. We move on to some radio fundamentals now, looking at wavelength and frequency. First off, wavelengths. So the length of a radio wave is the total length of a single cycle. On the screen here you can see a graphic showing a radio signal. If we look at the peak and measure that to the next peak, we then have the length of the wave, or the wavelength. Looking at a common VHF frequency of 145 MHz, the length of the wave is 2 meters. If it helps to visualize it, a small smart car is just over 2.5 meters long. You'll learn more about wavelength as we go through the course, and particularly how the length of antennas can pick up certain wavelengths. For convenience, radio amateurs refer to groups of frequencies by their wavelength. So for example the 144 to 146 megahertz band, because the lengths of the waves are 2 meters, it's often referred to as the 2 meter band. Looking now at frequencies, so the frequency is the number of cycles, so the peak to peak of each wave, that occur within a 1 second period. And frequency is measured in hertz. On the screen here you can see a graphic of a number of waves, and a time scale of 1 second. If you were to count the cycles, you would see there are 22 cycles here in that one second period, so a frequency of 22 hertz. As I'm sure you'll know, radio signals are often measured in megahertz, so that's millions of hertz per second. So looking to link wavelength and frequency together, they are very closely matched. You'll see from this graphic that as the frequency rises, the wavelength is reduced. So for higher frequency signals, the gap between the peaks to the peaks would shorten. In summary, the higher the frequency, the shorter the length of the wave.
For foundation, you'll be expected to be able to convert between frequency and wavelength. For the exam, you'll be given the chart that you can see on the screen now. Let's look at how to use this chart. Let's take the 20 meter band on HF as an example. If you follow along from the 20 meter mark to where it meets the diagonal line. You then follow the line down and you'll find the frequency of 14 MHz. Hopefully you have a copy of the paper chart in front of you, so feel free to try the exercise the other way round. Look on the bottom axis for 144 MHz. Follow the line up to the diagonal line and hopefully you'll find that that coincides with the 2 meter band. Modes and modulation. There are a number of different ways that radio amateurs can communicate. Most commonly these days we use voice. Originally CW was the main mode of operation, also known as Morse code. This is still in use today. We can also use data to send messages using keyboards and a mode called slow scan TV, slow scan television. We'll look at these in more detail through the rest of the course. You will need to be familiar with the terms FM, frequency modulation, AM, amplitude modulation, CW, which stands for continuous wave, also known as Morse code, SSB, single sideband, digital voice, and data modes such as FT8 and SSTV. Don't worry too much about these terms now as they'll be explained throughout the course. So in summary, remember the bands HF is from 3 to 30 MHz, VHF is from 30 to 300 MHz, UHF 300 to 3000 MHz. Remember too that we have to share our frequencies with other radio users and in the exam you'll be provided with tables to show who's allowed to use which frequencies. Also frequency and wavelength. Remember the higher the frequency the shorter the wavelength and you should use the conversion chart supplied with your exam. That's all for this section. Welcome to Amateur Radio. Thanks for watching this latest module of our Foundation Online course. We hope you found it useful. If you're looking for some more help with your studies, we do recommend the Foundation Study Guide, available from Amazon in Kindle or paperback format. Thanks for watching again and best of luck with your studies. As a reminder, this video is part of the free Foundation online course. If you're studying for Foundation, sign up and get access to all of the course material, including slides, lessons, handouts, videos, quizzes and our mocks. You can sign up at www.hamtrain.co.uk.